This is the true story of what happened to Lisa Marie Young, and, where she is now. The details presented here are real. Some parts are disturbing. Please forgive my crude video, but this is intended to inform, not to entertain. I mean no disrespect, to anyone. 1. The Jungle Lisa shared a beer with her dad, at her parents' apartment, on Barron's Road. She said goodbye to her parents, then went home, right next door, to have a quick bath, and get dressed before going out. She dressed in all black, shirt, skirt, zip-up thigh-high boots, and a cropped leather jacket. She added a small black purse, and a chain of silver hoops, which she wore first as a necklace, and later as a belt. Lisa met up with her friend Dallas and the two of them headed downtown, to the Jungle Cabaret, on Skinner Street. It was Dallas's 23rd birthday. He'd already been celebrating all day. A group of Lisa's friends were just leaving, so they had a short conversation outside, about how the bar was much slower than they'd expected for the long weekend. A man was standing nearby and overheard the conversation and joined in. He agreed that the bar was boring and he spoke of a big house party that was underway. Lisa's friends then left. She later said the conversation went something like this. Hey, you want to ditch this lame bar and go hit a big party? Thanks, but I promised Dallas I'd party with him on his birthday. Well, then Dallas should come too. Hey, Dallas, do you like free alcohol? Um, yes, yes I do. Thanks, but I just got here and I haven't even said hi to my friends inside yet. No problem, I don't mind waiting. Oh, thanks but I'm gonna be a while. I've got lots of friends. That's okay, take your time. Dallas and I will be right here whenever you're ready. Hurry up, Lisa. Oh, um, okay, I guess. Lisa entered the bar alone at about midnight. Chris Adair, the driver of his grandparents' Jaguar XJ40, kept Dallas occupied outside with conversation about the car and about how awesome the party would be. Lisa did indeed have a lot of friends, they occupied at least half of the tables in the bar. During the next hour she made her way from table to table, visiting with everyone she knew. After a while, the driver sent Dallas into the bar to check on Lisa. This repeated twice more before Lisa finally agreed to leave. Lisa told a friend that she didn't want to go to the party. But she felt obligated. It was a seven-minute drive to the house party, at 827 Nanaimo Lakes Road, next to Colliery Dam Park. They stayed at this party for about an hour, before getting back into the car, and driving to a different party. This one was in the Cathars Lake area, another seven-minute drive. Soon after arrival at the second party, the driver offered to go buy some food for the group. But, he said he needed Lisa to come along to help carry it. Lisa agreed to help, but, the driver didn't go get food. Instead they ended up at a house on Bowen Road. Around 4.30, Dallas got a call from Lisa. Sure enough, it's Lisa on her cell phone. I call her back. She goes, Dallas, uh, I don't know what's going on. This guy won't bring me back. We're sitting in a driveway on Bowen Road, and he won't bring me back. We're just sitting here. She's like, I'm bored. I'm getting pissed off. Many people speculate that the call came from this driveway at Bowen and Pride. The owner ran a small construction company. The house was later torn down by the city. Lisa was next taken to a location in the Departure Bay area. It was at this point that Lisa's cell phone carrier lost contact with her phone. She'd never turned it off before. Most people don't realize, there was a third house party going on that night. This one took place every Canada Day long weekend, at a large home on Departure Bay Road.